All right, so everybody watch uh, SmackDown. It's- yes. All right. So Daniel Bryan comes out to the ring. He's carrying a chair and wearing, wearing gear. He uh, grabbed a mic and said everyone saw the truth. Basically talked about he saw Roman. Everybody saw Roman tap. But the good news is that Roman is alive and the Roman Reigns had tapped out to Daniel Bryan. In a perfect world, what would that mean? Is that he would be standing in the ring as a universal champion and he'd be heading to main event at WrestleMania. But none of that happened because Edge hit him across the back with a steel chair. Brian referenced Edge telling him he wasn't going about this the right way, and Brian said he had enough. He was tired of doing things the right way and staying on the sidelines while people had their dream matches they didn't earn. Brian said he earned his title shot at Fastlane, earned main event at WrestleMania, and he got nothing. He said he was willing to earn it again. His demands were simple. He wanted a rematch with Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship, and he wanted it tonight. Brian then declared he wasn't leaving the ring until he got what he wanted. So Brian stayed in the ring. They get to go to commercial. Uh, the replay was shown, and Brian refused to move and sat in silence. Finally, Adam Pierce walked out and told Brian he can't give him a rematch. Brian asked if he'd seen Roman tap out and the truck would replay it. Pierce said the referee's decision is final. The next offense will be against Edge of WrestleMania. Brian offered to face the winner of Edge versus Roman at WrestleMania, but Pierce said it would be unreasonable for them to have two championship matches back to back. So Brian obviously said there was a double standard in place. This is fair for him to face Roman immediately after the Elimination Chamber, which made perfect sense. And he knew it would because like Adam Pierce actually saying that made him look stupid even saying that, you know? Um, he then proposed that Edge and Roman Reigns take place on night one and that he would face a winner on night two. Edge walked out and slapped the microphone out of Pierce's hand on the way to the ring. He grabbed a microphone, act irate, and said Brian spoke about this being his last WrestleMania, but every match of his could be his his last. This was his dream, and Brian wasn't going to take it away from him. He spoke about winning the Royal Rumble at number one, and Brian had maneuvered his way into a title match at WrestleMania and lost. He then called Brian a s- <laughs> and he didn't deserve the title match at WrestleMania. Brian then pulled a double leg takedown and landed some punches to Edge, and they scrambled back to their feet and Edge hit Brian with a spear. He then grabbed a chair and hit him across the back with it and backed up the ramp as Brian left the ring. What would you guys think of this? I just thought it was a little bit weird that Brian's saying he wants a title match with a title match. You know what I'm saying? What, what now? What, what did you say? He wanted a chance for a title match mm-hmm. by being in another title match. You know, like, um, I, I'm willing to earn my way Again, well, why are you willing to win your, your way if he tapped? That should be your that should be your complaint. He tapped every what he said at the beginning. He tapped everybody saw it, and I deserve to be in that match. But he was more like, "Oh, I'm willing to fight again to see if I can get another chance for the title." I don't know. That came off a little weird to me. Not to you. Let me let me let me bring something up here because this we have to start the print. I want to talk about this because this runs a thread to the show for what I saw at the end. You heard this week, Joe, maybe you could pull a story up on this, uh, that Vince McMahon was not pleased with Edge because he said, said like, there's reports that, that, that Vince thinks Edge looks old. Yeah. they. Th- did did you hear that. this, Conan? Uh, bro, I thought the same thing without hearing this story. He just okay. kind of, yeah. Wow. Well, hang, 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 like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. One of them is Edge's appearance was a factor in Vince McMahon changing plans. You thought he looked older every, every week. I saw that. I saw that thing too because one of the we okay. must have go on the same site. Or something. Yeah. No, but his it says here his appearance oh, it was in was Google. A, it was on my Google search thing. So yeah. That's that's what. Yeah. It was actually a story Edge told, but this is uh this one does say Meltzer reported. WWE noticed the issue of Edge's age, not so much the number, but the look of his age was a concerning part for Vince McMahon. The source stated Edge was looking older every week on TV since returning in January, so the WWE chairman and CEO decided to change the match, partially because of Edge's look, in addition to wanting to shake up things. Okay. The feeling so is that, that Brian will be the baby. That face, leads, yeah. that is, that, that steers me in to, like, th- this actually, to me, becomes a better storyline because now the word is out there that people think Edge is old, so how's this guy going to react? You know, and he's got, he's kind of going nuts. Yeah. Is kind of like the thing, which is, it's just, I mean, what, what would the guy do? You can't, you can't ignore, you know, it's like, he's, he's like, he's like hanging on. He's like the old get off my lawn guy now, right? you know, like seriously, that's what, that's what people are looking at him as. Right. No. And the and An bro, angry his, older his, heel, his, you know? his, his, his persona was great here. Cause he told Brian, um, that he had lost twice. He had won the Royal Rumble. And, you know, he's bringing up all this passion and he just tells him, like he says, you don't deserve the match. You Bro, this was a good promo, and I don't know if you noticed this. The people in the back one were booing, and obviously that's manipulated by WWE, yeah. so they well, want now him to be the heel in this thing. Bro, yeah. Let me tell you something, too, about the WWE, about this, um, like, leading into WrestleMania, like, that they can manipulate the crowd noise because it's simulated. Bro, yeah. could you imagine those Bray Wyatt segments in front of a live crowd? 
Like, what do you think the fans would be chanting during during, during the, the the Bray Wyatt segments in front of live crowds? I don't know. I, th- I think it's tough tough to say with that audience whether they would Bro, really they embrace would that. Sh- or they would on it. it. They would like, troll it. They would shit. They they would just do they video, been, whatever. So the fact the fact they can do some stuff without the live crowds right now is like yeah. to their credit. But like it's it's hurting <laughs> some of their other stuff. You know what I think that know? would really fail in front of the live crowd? The Braun Strowman uh, choo choo train around the ring. I think that might not. <laughs> well, right, here's so a, here here's but but here's the one thing, bro. And you know, as you're reading this, people will find out exactly what we're talking about. This storyline has been greatly done, and unlike Bray Wyatt's storyline, where when they brought in Alexa and Randy, it really didn't add anything. It might have even helped derail it. Everybody that's come into this storyline with Roman Reigns has been great, whether it's Kevin Owens, Brian Daniels, Edge, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they've really, everybody's been been playing their part well. Been very impressed at how long they've been able to keep my interest. Yeah, because he's like, doesn't really, you know, it's like Roman doesn't have a seriously credible challenger right now. Right. And they're getting a lot of mileage out of the challenges they got and like making it look like, hey, maybe this guy could get beat by And they all cut yeah. great promos. Right. They, they built, Believable, this, this the whole not thing, cheesy. You know? yeah. Right, right. You're, you're sitting there, you're looking at these characters and you're like, I wouldn't pay for this thing. I wouldn't pay. You know, if you're seeing the poster and it says Roman versus these three guys and you haven't watched the TV yet, right? right. You're like, there's no way Roman's going to lose these guys. But then you watch the TV leading up just like, well, maybe he could lose these guys. Right. You know. Um, another, another good thing about the Roman stuff, just real quick, is that you've got Edge involved now. You've got Brian involved. They're both supposed to be involved in creative, if definitely with their own stuff. And it's the same thing with Roman and Paul. They're heavily involved in all of his stuff. So you have all those great minds together. You know, working on all this stuff together, as well as whoever on the creative team is is putting the stuff up for them. But at least they have a so, voice and everything too. Yeah. So next, Roman was shown backstage with Paul Heyman and Jay Uso, and he sent Paul after Adam Pierce and sent Jay along to provide force if necessary. Well, <laughs> well you didn't funny. do, bro. You didn't even do that justice. That, I was just reading what it said. Yeah, I yeah, no, no, no. But that was so great. Let me tell you, people, everybody, watch this. Paulie is literally. <laughs> Roman is sitting in a chair, but you know how he sits like he's the king, and right? And Paul Which, leers over his shoulder, right? right. <laughs> but Paul Lee was behind him, waiting, you know, very heelishly for his next command, right? And, right. and he goes, "Go get me, uh, go get me, Adam Pierce, with pleasure." You know, he runs off, right? He's great in his role, and then he tells Jey Uso, um, he goes, "Go back him up and use force if necessary." And Uso goes, "Are you sure?" And he goes, and this is funny because I've heard a lot of stars say this, and I probably said it myself uh, one time when I was probably didn't give a f-. He goes, what are they going to do, fire us? <laughs> that was tremendous. I, I heard one, you, one, one time. That's uh, a Scott Hall line if I ever heard What are they going to do, fire us? Yeah. One, one time uh, Bruce Pritchard described Heyman in real life as like a real life little finger from Game of Thrones, right? That's what he reminds me of on TV in this role now, hanging around the throne kind of. Stirring it up and being the little uh, the little messenger boy if he has to. He's reminding me a little finger right now. 